And guess where they had lunch yesterday? The Waldorf. The Automat. The Automat. Oh, and she loves her new coat. She never takes it off. Never? Never. Miss Hannigan, I, I know you're busy, but this has to be signed and sent back to Mr. Donatelli at the Board of Orphans no later than 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. What for? Because Mr. Warbuck is so taken that Annie... Oh, well, guess what? What? He wants to adopt her. How nice. How wonderful. Now let me get this wonderful news straight. Annie is going to be Warbuck's kid, the daughter of a millionaire. Oh, no, 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 no. The daughter of a billionaire. A billionaire? Yes, and Mr. Warbuck asked me to come down in person to tell you that Annie won't be coming back here ever. Ever? My, 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 my. <laughs> Would you excuse me for a moment, please? <laughs> more wonderful news for me? I did tell you about the coat, didn't I? Oh, you told me about the coat. Well, then, good day, Miss Hannigan. Yeah, good day. Oh, and uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Pardon me, Trot. Hi, yes, this long time no see. Oh, my God, Rooster. It never rains, but it pours. They finally let you out of Leavenworth? Well, I got six months off for good behavior. I'll bet. What was it this time? Oh, uh, some old geezer up in Yonkers said I swindled him out of 1100 bucks. Oh, yeah? Why do you say that? Because the rooster swindled him out of 1100 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Lil. Sis, I'd like you to meet a very good friend of mine from... Uh, Jersey City. Jersey City. Miss Lily St. Regis. Oh, named after the hotel. <laughs> Which floor? <laughs> Don't you just love Lily, sis? Oh, yeah, I'm nuts about her. Rooster, do me a favor. Get out of here and take the St. Regis with you. <laughs> Come on, Aggie. Can it. Looking for a handout, huh? No, I... I got money. I got 80 bucks coming in the mail Thursday. So all I need is 10 to tide me over. Uh-uh, not even a nickel for the subway rooster. A fiver, Aggie. High five, top, you gotta laugh. Oh, God, chewing your big top. Gonna be living in clover. This ain't exactly Buckingham Palace. Oh, yeah? I'm on the city. Steady salary, free food, free gas and electric. I'm doing all right. Sis, you're doing just like I'm doing. Lousy. How did the two Hannigan kids ever end up like this? Honest kids. I remember the way our sated mother would sit and croon us her lullaby. She'd say, kids, there's a place that's like no other. You gotta get there before you die. You don't get there by playing by the rule book. Hit that the ain't there. Yeah, you load the dice. Mother dear, for we know you're down there listening. How can we follow? Fifth Avenue. 
He don't live on no Fifth Avenue. He don't? Where does he live? Oh! Easy Street! Easy Street! Where the rich folks play! Yeah, yeah, yeah! Easy Street! And everyone's a big to Easy Street! When you get there, yeah! Hey, sis, what that dame want? Well, she brought me that wonderful news that Annie, one of the orphans from here, Annie, gotta hate that kid, getting adopted by Warbucks, gonna have everything. That rotten kid is gonna have everything. Crummy orphan, living in the lap of luxury. It ain't fair. Not nah, ain't fair. It ain't fair how we scrounge for three of Warbucks while she gets Warbucks. The little brat. It ain't fair to be feel like this private peanut while we get peanuts. She's living pat. Maybe she holds the key, this little lady. Oh, to getting more bucks instead of less. Maybe we fix the game with something shady. Where does that put us? Oh, tell her. Give you one guess. Oh. Mr. President, I know that Bernard Baruch and I are not exactly standing on a bread line. <clears throat> no, I'm not asking for your help. Never ask for any man's help, and I never will. What? What? What I am telling you is that you got to do something, and you got to do it damn fast. Well, yes, I can talk to you about it on uh, Friday, sir. Friday. Good. <laughs> Listen, Mr. President, why don't we bury the hatchet and you come by here on Christmas Eve on with Mrs. Roosevelt on your way to Hyde Park for supper. Marvelous. <laughs> yes, goodbye, Mr. President. Never would have asked him if I thought he was going to say yes. <laughs> Call Al Smith and find out what Democrats eat. Yes, sir. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> make a note, meeting 11 a.m. Friday at the White House with the President. Yes, sir. Did it come? Did the package come from Tiffany's? Yes, sir. It arrived this morning. Oh. Joe? Yes, I'm <clears throat> going to give this thing to her, and then I'm going to tell her that I, I want to adopt her. Where is he? Oh, she's upstairs in her room, sir. She's writing another letter to her friends at the orphanage. I'll have Drake call her down. Fine. Damn. Mr. Warbeck, there's no reason to be nervous. Why, she's going to be the happiest little girl in the whole world. Damn right she is. I'm not nervous. Get her down here. Yes, sir. Great. Mr. Warbuck will see Annie now. Miss Annie, Mr. Warbuck will see you now. Thank you, Miss Gray. Good morning, Annie. Good morning, Mr. Warbeck. How are you today? Fine, thank you, sir. How are you? Oh, I'm fine. Um, Annie, the time has come for the two of us to have a serious discussion. You're sending me back to the orphans, right? 
Why, of course not. A Annie, uh, can we have a man-to-man a -man talk? Sure. Well, let, let's sit down. Annie, I was born into a, a very poor family right here in New York in a place called Hell's Kitchen. Both my parents died before I was 10 years old. And uh, I made a promise to myself right then and there that someday, one way or another, I was going to be rich, very rich. That was a good idea. <laughs> By the time I was 23, I'd made my first million. And in 10 years, I turned that into 100 million. And in those days, that was a lot of money. <laughs> anyway, making money is all I've ever given a damn about. And I might as well tell you right now, I've been ruthless to those I've had to climb over on the way to the top. Because I always believed one thing. You don't have to be nice to the people you meet on the way up if you're not going back down again. <laughs> but lately, I've come to realize that no matter how many do's and birds you've got or Rembrandt, that if you're alone and you've got nobody to share your life with, you might as well be broke as back in Hell's Kitchen. Annie, do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? Sure. Good. Kind of. I guess not. Damn. Yeah. Annie, I was in Tiffany's the other day, and I, I picked this thing up for you. I, I had it in grade, too. A neat sheet, thank you, Torb. Aw, oh, gee. It's a silver locket, Annie. Uh, I noticed that old broken one you always wear, and, and I told myself, I'm going to get that kid a nice new locket. Gee, thank you, Torb. Let me have the old one. And no, no. Why, well, Annie, what's wrong? This locket. My mom and dad left it with me at the orphanage, and there was a note, too, saying they love me, and they were coming back to me. Oh, I know being here and all with you for Christmas, I'm real lucky. But I don't know how to say it. The one thing I want more than anything else in the whole world is to find my mother and father and to be like regular kids this once in my own. <laughs> Annie, it'll be all right. <laughs> I'll, I'll find them for you. <laughs> I'll, I'll find your mother and father for you. Uh, I'll get her a brandy. <laughs> it's going to be all right, Annie. Look. Now, Miss Annie, you just see. If anyone can find your parents, Mr. Warbucks is the man. There's nothing to worry about, dear. Why, Mr. Warbucks will find your parents if he has to put everyone in the organization on the job to do it. Why, if he has to pull every political string there is to pull up to and including the White House. The League of Nations. <laughs> Give your best G-Man. A day, a week, month, however long it takes. <clears throat> well, put him on vacation. I'll pay for it. Yes, yes, I'll pay all costs.